Alrighty folks, welcome back to another video. So today I am going to be ranking the items that boss monsters drop. So I don't have every item from boss monsters here. There's a couple things I left out. So basically I'm only doing unique item from bosses. So if it's not a unique drop, it's not in here. And then second off, I've left out the shadow atrium and the ancient key because basically I'm just going to be rolling those into the ancient fuel lever items because that their only use case is to kill the ancient fuel lever so i'll be taking that into account with how difficult these items are to get okay with that said let's get into this okay first things first we got the knapsack this is from misery toadstool which is indicated by the name it's an absolutely miserable fight and i would recommend that no one does it it can be used to dupe shroom skin i don't this isn't an intended thing by clay this is a bug that happens with a lot of items where you can build multiple of them out of one rare item Happens a lot of times. They're removed in the past, so they'll probably remove this again. Right now, though, I'll say it's D tier, even though it's incredibly hard to get. What it does is you can throw it, and on the ground, there will be, like, some sleeping powder. So if, uh, if anything runs into that, it'll fall asleep. But it is absurdly, absurdly expensive and absurdly hard to get to rest. Next up, we got the Guardian Horn. So I'm going to put the Guardian Horn in C tier because it is incredibly easy to get. It's... Good food uh, if you don't want to use it to make a Houndy Shootius, and it can be used to make the Houndy Shootius in late game. So I'm just leaving it in C tier. Next up, we got the Lazy Deserter. This depends on what you're doing. So if you're playing solo, we're gonna we'd say it's probably like E tier because it can still be used to lower your sanity really fast if you need to. If you're playing with multiple people we'd put it right up in S tier because it lets you teleport to them instantly. So it's a great item if you're in, the, in that situation. I'm just going to leave it in the co-op tier. We got the fun cap and this is indicative of every fun cap. It has three different types and the only difference is what type of mushroom you use to build it. They're pretty expensive and what they do is they lower your hunger drain rate, which sounds useful and they have a decent amount of time that they last for. The issue is that they make food in your inventory spoil faster including things like hand bats so i have to put it in f tier if it didn't have that it would actually be a pretty decent item we got bear jerfer so this is used for either the insulated pack or for the hibernation vest now this would be the best body winter clothing when you make it into that except winter clothing is a total scam and there's no reason to wear it anyways and the insulated pack it's just you have to wait until like it's like day 70 something for barrier to spawn item i could almost see it being useful with the insulated pack you might just want to like upgrade your backpack if you are not super good so you can't like get the magic luminescence i'm gonna put it in e tier just because the insulated pack has like a couple very very niche circumstances you might want to use it in which is basically just like an upgraded backpack that makes it so that food rots slower in it which would be nice for like a ham bat right so i'll leave it in e tier bundling wrap so this is a recipe dropped by the bee queen and makes it so that you can put four items in it and then it's reusable all you got to do is add a rope every time and yeah that's all it really takes and it makes that food in it does not spoil at all which is op goes straight to s tier just op item that's all there is to it i forget which lamp is called witch but this one is cheaper and it's worse both of these are drops from toadstool and the difference is this one cannot have spores in it which spores last longer so if i were to put spores in this one it would give off light for 60 days i don't remember what the longest lasting light source in this one is but it's probably going to be like 30 or 40 days or something because it can't use spores so i'm going to put this one in e tier and this one in d tier mostly because they're really hard to get and because you don't particularly need stationary light sources and these are more so for mega basers just to have something kind of pretty in their base and so that they can see their base at night i wouldn't ever build them royal jelly this is used to make jelly beans it comes from the bee queen s tier Jelly beans are op healing items and basically if you are really holding bee queen down you really don't need other healing items. You can just kill her every 20 days and just use jelly beans. It'd be perfectly fine. Kind of OP, just a little bit. You know, Bee Queen Crown, there's another drop from the Bee Queen. And all of these drop from the Bee Queen every time, by the way. It's not just like a random chance, like how it is with Toadstool. And you might or might not get the drop you want. So the Bee Queen Crown, what it does is it reverses negative Sandy Auras to be positive Sandy Auras. So like if your cops is attacking you, your Sandy will go up really fast instead. 
I'm going to say this is a B tier item before the insanity nerf. I probably would have put it down in like D tier, but yeah, it's a pretty good item now. The issue is it has that durability on it, so you can break it pretty fast actually. And that's especially true because usually you want to use it in combat situations. So like when you're fighting ancient fuel weaver, things like that. Bone armor. So this makes you completely invincible for one hit every five seconds. You can swap out multiple bone armors to make it so you can take multiple hits within those five seconds. Normally you only see people use two or three even like in super late game world. Yeah, full invulnerability. You just can't pass up and it can be refueled with nightmare fuel so you, it never runs out basically s tier item just all the way drops from ancient fuel weaver though which makes it pretty difficult to get still needs to go in s tier though because it's so so dang strong trident so this drops from crab king which is a pretty decently hard boss and you got to go out to the sea to find him which takes a while this is only useful in the ocean in the first place it is a faster method of gathering rocks although it is still slower and just swapping to Maxwell and just going and mining out like a whole rock field or something. I'm going to put this in E tier. It's still a decently fast rock collecting method if you don't want to go immediately out to go and swap to Maxwell and it could help you get rocks a little bit quickly. I I would never use this item. I hate ocean content. It's all so boring and really that only be ever be used for like a mega baser in an extremely specific scenario. And also it's super hard to get. Here Clops Eyeball. This is used for the Eyebrella and the Hound Shootius. It has to go up in S tier. It's just OP. Bone Helm. So what this does is it works like a Nightmare Amulet except like a permanent version. Uh, it like doesn't count down durability. It only takes durability if you get hit. It actually makes it so that the shadow creatures are neutral to you while you wear it. So yeah, basically this is a pretty good item. It doesn't have very much durability so you kind of run it out very quickly. Pretty much you'd only use this if you are ruin spacing and it comes from a really hard boss. If the boss was easier to get to and to fight, I'd probably put it up higher, but I'm actually going to put this in D tier. It's still a pretty useful item. Scales. Scales are used in a whole bunch of things, and they're dropped exclusively by the Dragonfly. Uh, most notably, they are used in the Scaled Furnace. I'm going to put it up in A tier. That's pretty good. It can also be used for Scale Mail, Scaled Flooring, but yeah, uh, mostly useful for the Scaled Furnace. And you can get them without killing the Dragonfly, actually, if you just deal a lot of damage to her very quickly. Done her, and then run away and wait for her to respawn. You can just do that over and over to get, harvest scales. And that's the easiest way to get them. The furnace. So the scaled furnace. This is a recipe dropped when you kill dragonfly. I'm also going to put it up in A tier. It's basically like a permanent roaring fire, except without much light radius. So it's pretty nice, especially for late game uh, mega bases. Shadow Thurible. This is the fastest way to gather most resources. So if you are looking to get log or stone or any of that stuff, basically what you do is you get to spawn in a weaker version of the fuel weaver. You could do it on the surface with the forest one who's not like aggressive to you, but you can only do that at nighttime. Or you can do it in the caves where he will attack you still, and he's pretty obnoxious. But the thing is, when you hold this, you're actually controlling him, so he will fight for you. So if you want to re-clear out the runes, you can actually use him to kill some of the things if you want. He's pretty strong. He's like, uh, I'd say about equivalent in strength to the, the deer clops. His AoE attack isn't as good though, so maybe a little bit weaker. And he's great for harvesting resources because he can just like run over them and they break instantly. So yeah, S tier. And I'm pretty sure he can be refueled with nightmare fuel too, if I remember correctly. So you don't have to really worry about it running out. The friendly fruit fly fruit, what this is called. I think that's what this is called. This is for farming. You get it from killing the fruit fly thing or whatever. It's like a super easy boss that will come around when you farm. If you're playing Warly, this is useful and because the boss is easy anyways. Um, I don't see why not. I mean, let's put it right up in C tier. Boss is really easy to get it. And if you're playing Warly, those farms can be pretty useful. Yeah, C tier. Anyone else though, you're really just not going to use it. You're never going to come across it. You don't really have to worry about it. Watering can, this is another item that's going to be pretty much exclusively used by Warly players. You get it from the Malbatross, if I remember correctly, which is a total pain because you have to go out into the ocean and find it and it's a huge pain to go find. We will put it up in D tier because it's actually decently hard to go and find, but it's like a, it's just a watering can with more uses. So it saves a little bit of time. Pretty much only going to be used if you're doing like a really long-term world, like a mega basing world. The winged sail, uh, pretty much ocean content in general is just very, very seldomly useful. And this makes it so that you can 
go faster on your boat which is nice i'm not saying it's not nice to be able to go faster on your boat there's just not much useful out there in the ocean i'm gonna put it in e tier especially because it comes from the malbatross which is a huge pain to go find and now we got the spider hat which is from spider queens spider queens are pretty easy to kill the issue is sometimes they'll be like grouped together and then they're a total pain to kill. Generally not a very hard boss and a very useful item because you can use it to have spiders start a civil war as characters who aren't Weber and you don't really need like Abigail or anything to kill them off then and you can kill like a couple thousand at a time real easy. So I'm going to put it in B tier. Okay, if you like this video, make sure to smash the like button. Otherwise, I am going to turn you into a spider and throw you at a spider queen. Bye bye guys.